So in previous videos, we had talked about the idea of a sequence where we're, we're given a list of numbers and we can describe that sequence using some general form or maybe a recursive relation, what have you. But oftentimes, the, the, the genesis of our discussion of sequence is with the sequence itself. We see a list of numbers, but in order to do uh, any type of analysis or calculus with that sequence, uh, we often need a general form or maybe a recursive relationship. And so let's try to analyze a couple of sequences and see if we can find a pattern to them. So you look at this first sequence right here, uh, e, e squared over two, e cubed over three, e to the four over four, e to the five over five. And so some patterns I notice here is that uh, in each of these terms, there appears to be some e, the number e of course, that's going on here. It looks like it's in the numerator, right? And the power seems to be increasing by one each time, right? We, that's what, we see that as a recursive relationship. We see e to the first, e squared, e cubed, e fourth, e to the fifth. And as such, we then think that our general form, a sub n, is gonna have some power of e to it, e to the n. But we also recognize that each of these is a fraction. And the first one could be written as e over one, in which case, if you look at the denominators, you always see a one, two, three, four, five. The denominator seems just to be increasing by one each time, uh, and it seems to match the exponent of e in which case we get this general form a n equals e to the n over n. That one's not so bad. Uh, let's look at example b right here. So we have a sequence, again, um, kind of like the first one, we can rewrite this as, as fractions, one over one, one over three, one over nine, one over 27, one over uh, 81. The numerator always seems to be a one, so I can use that aspect here, b sub n, b sub n will equal one over, one over what? Well, if we look at the denominators, what's the connection here? One, three, nine, 27, 81. These appear to be powers of three, or three to the zero, three to the first, three squared for nine, three cubed, three to the fourth. And so we're gonna get powers of three, three to the end, but we have to be careful there, right? The first term, which is right here, actually has the zeroth power. And then the second term has the first power. The third term has the second power. The position we are in the sequence actually seems like we're actually taking the previous power of three. And so really b to the n should be one over th three to the n minus one. Our power of e is actually one less than we are in the sequence. Uh, it's reasons like this where it actually might be advantageous to start your term, your sequence with the zeroth term. One could take that, but that's a convention we're not gonna follow for right now. Uh, looking at the third sequence C right here, um, we have the sequence one, three, five, seven, nine. Um, this seems to be the sequence of odd integers. You're and then you're, thus you're increasing by two each time. So if you think of your sequence Cn, well, C1 appears to be one. And then the next term Cn seems just to be the previous term, Cn minus one plus two. I mean, that's how we get this odd sequence of numbers. Um, and so by adding multiples of two each time, we can actually see the following pattern. Cn is gonna start off with a one, um, and then we add a multiple of two to it each time, two, uh, but the multiple is one less than we are right now. And so we see that we could do, if you look at this sequence real quick, just to check it, um, the first term, you won't add any multiples of two. The second term, you'll add a multiple of two, so you get one plus two, which is three. Um, with the, with the th third term, right, when n equals three, you're gonna add one plus two times two, right? In which case you get four plus one, which is a five. So we can see that this thing matches up here. Um, one plus two times n minus one. I'm kind of using the fact that this is an actually what's called an arithmetic sequence. Um, it increases by a constant amount each time you go throughout the, throughout the sequence there. Now we can simplify this formula, of course, by distributing the two. You're gonna get one plus two n minus two, which simplifies to be two n minus one. It's a nice little formula for uh, the sequence of odd integers. We're actually gonna use this one a lot. So this is one we'll wanna come back to in the future. I'm um, looking at it, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. That looks like the sequence of squares. So we could say dn is equal to n squared. That's a nice one. And then the last one, e here, uh, we have 1, negative 1 half, 1 third, negative 1 fourth, 1 fifth. So this kind of seems like something we saw before with the e's, right? e sub n. We have these fractions. It's always 1 over where we are in the sequence. 
1 over n. But there is this issue about the sign, right? We have a positive 1, then a negative 1. Then we have a positive 1 again, then a negative 1. Then a positive 1. Um, it switches back and forth between uh, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. Um, this behavior we're seeing right here is often referred to as an alternating sequence because of the alternation of signs. It switches positive, negative, positive, negative. And so this is something difficult to have for a continuous function because uh, there is no next term when you look at an interval of real, of real numbers. Like if you take the number pi, what's the next number? Uh, you know, you, you can find a bigger number, but it's not the next one. You can find a bigger one. You could find one that's still closer to the pi. Uh, but with, with sequences, there is always a next term, a next term, and a next term. And so we can describe things like alternating sequences in a way that don't really make sense for continuous functions. And so what's going to happen here is we are going to take powers of negative 1. Notice, whoops, if we take negative 1 raised to the n plus 1 power, I'm going to rewrite this thing right here. So if we take negative 1 to the n plus 1 power, times that by 1 over n, notice what happens when n equals 1, then the power of negative 1 you're going to get is a 2, which is a positive 1, particularly that's positive. When you take n equals 2, you're going to get negative 1 to the third power. That's an odd power of negative 1, so you get a negative 1. And that matches up with what that sequence we saw, positive, negative. The next one, if you do n equals 2, sorry, n equals 3, you're going to take negative 1 to the fourth power, which is a positive 1. And so then the pattern continues, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And so this idea of a negative 1 to some power of n is how we can capture alternating sequences. If you start positive, then negative, you're going to take n plus 1 as your power of negative 1. If you start negative, then positive, you actually can just get away with negative 1 to the n, like so. And so this gives us some examples of how we can actually uh, build equations, formulas, for upon the pattern that we see here. These patterns can be difficult to find sometimes, but be patient with yourself, and we can often derive a formula for these uh, sequences that we run across.